Welcome to Women at Halftime podcast. For men and women at mid-career or the halftime of life with issues that concern you. Maximize your skills, resources, and experience to live an even more fulfilling and significant second half of life. Right here with me, Deborah Johnson on Women at Halftime podcast. Well, hello. It's great to be here with you today. And of course, once a month, I bring in a special guest, Greg. So Hi, everybody. Yeah, it's great to uh, be here together. And we're actually approaching a <clears throat> wonderful little subject today, setting goals as a couple. Is it worth it? So we're going to talk through some of those. I say yes, but we're going to answer that. Maybe we'll hold you in suspense and see what Greg has to say on that as well. To remind you, we have a couple things um, coming up. Uh, Hero Mountain Summit, we do have the partner program now as we are um, coming upon this. And the, the links to everything, usually you can find them all on the articles that, that come along with, with all of this, with each um, session that we have, each show. Hero Mountain Summit, hero-mountain-summit on goalsforyourlife.com. You can find it there. Also, remember the book, The Summit. Um, this will be um, after the holidays, but there's it's a wonderful book, a wonderful gift book. Another book that's a really great book is Women at Halftime. That's the title of this podcast. And uh, it's a great book. It goes through Hero Mountain, the steps of that as well. So let's kind of dig into this. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, Greg, goals as a couple. What would you say? Is it worth even talking through those? And, you know, how do you do this every year? Well, I, I would say anytime you're talking and uh, clarifying thoughts that it's worthwhile. Yes. So um, it helps because um, <clears throat> it just it helps you clarify what, one another are thinking with regards to scheduling for the next year. And that can overlap into uh, how busy are we going to be at work? Uh, is work going to you know, drive us to take you know, uh, overnight trips? Um, it can, but then it goes into all the kids' activities and uh, your responsibility to either transport, uh, coach, manage, um, you know, participate in any way um, in, in any volunteer activities you have mm -hmm. and coordinating all of that at the middle of our lives uh, can be pretty hectic. And so the more communication that goes on, the better it is. So, yes, I totally agree with communication to um, how important that is. And uh, it really depends on what stage of life you're at. If you still have kids at home or maybe you don't have kids or maybe you have kids that are launched. So. Yay. Um, <laughs> but things don't end with family, and we'll talk about that with, with responsibilities and things that we want to include in our schedule. Now, we are probably one of the uh, unique couples that have said, let's talk about our goals um, in the new year. Uh, we don't know a lot of couples that do this, um, but basically mm -hmm. we sort of came together with our individual you know, aspire, you know, what we aspire to, but also talked about a few family things together. But we're going to touch on um, financial, family, personal and professional development, health, and even location. So, uh, but I think you brought up a point of communication, how how important that is, at least to talk to each yeah, other. Yeah, well, I mean, as a couple, it's yeah. important just to know how each other are thinking. So if, right. you're, if you're setting business goals, um, at work, um, you know, it, it helps the relationship if um, the other person knows where your business is going, uh, what kind of struggles you might have to try to get there, because that all gives you a clue as to um, what the other person is thinking. Right. Oh, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> this is live. We know this uh, as we do this. So, yeah, you just you really do want to have some sort of um, idea where every, each each other, you know, and how they're feeling. And I'll bring up the the love languages again and how important that is in the way we communicate, because some communicate more with the words of affirmation, of course, and 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 how you communicate uh, that that includes you know, appreciation for each other and appreciation for the goals. True, but I mean, just the mere talking about yeah. goals, uh -huh. um, 
you know, if you do a follow up question is why is that a goal? And yeah. uh, your yeah. spouse explains um, why that needs to be be a goal. And then one more follow up question. What kind of obstacles are in the way of achieving that goal? Um, just those two questions can give yeah. you a big insight into how the other person's life at work is, right. uh, what kind of circumstances are, they're facing, what their marketplace is like, right. um, what their support staff's like, right. or you know what kind of challenges they've got because of the support staff. Right. Um, you know, all of those insights just make you two closer right. and um, and help help you understand where the other person's coming from. And and just to put a little disclaimer, there have been times when we have been so busy with the kids and we would touch base and I didn't totally understand some of the pressures that you were going through and you were, um, I especially remember when you were starting, you were working with Campbell Soup Company and you were working nights in resets and you were in freezers and, you know, and, and, and you did it. It was some, a lot of gut work and with the Pepperidge Farms and all of that. And um, I was kind of on survival mode and with keeping kids going and uh, but just coming together and just at least talking about some of those things and saying you know I'm feeling some extra pressure in here and uh, but I'm you know doing the best but just to support each other through that yeah because uh, no matter what phase of life you're going through um, we can all go through periods of sur survival mode right and right. Um, responsible people tend to just put their heads down yeah. and handle whatever it takes to survive. Right. And right. Uh, a lot of times uh, our instinct is, is when we got our heads down, we don't want to brag about it, talk about it. Right. We're not trying to get sympathy. We're just, right. you know, trying to get through life. But inevitably what ends up happening is you're bringing stress home. Right. And um, if the other person doesn't understand what kind of pressure you're under, um, they can misinterpret that stress. So, uh, you know, a conversation about goals and how you're going to get there a lot of times gives valuable insight as to, um, you know, are you in survival mode or are things just moving along, you know, hunkadorially? So, yeah. And uh, that's a really good conversation. And the more conversations you have, the yeah. less survival mode becomes something that could be mistaken for reaching for sympathy. Right. Um, you know, if you've been in an ongoing conversation and uh, you bring up things have changed and uh, suddenly mm -hmm. there's a lot of pressure, um, you know, that's just the next thing. And um, it, it doesn't have to be that big of a deal. So uh, talking about goals is part of just a regular conversation. Right. And we're talking about this because we're coming up on the first part of the year and yeah, it's just a natural time to kind of talk about that. Right, right. And it helps you, you know, with the survival mode. It really helps you be on the same team. Yes. You know, and, right. and, and, you know because a lot of times you just, you know, you're pulling apart. And if you're going to talk about relationships and working together in a family and, you know, all of that, uh, this can apply also to colleagues, you know, together and talking about your goals, at least where you are. Yeah, let me give them. Uh, so d d when Deb and I had probably, you know, an eight year old, a six year old, and a four year old, mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously she's in survival mode because she's, <laughs> you know, just trying to manage the hecticness of three boys. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I'm early in my career yeah. and, um, you know, I'm basically slave labor without the slave title. <laughs> and um, so I'm in survival mode at work. Uh, she's in survival mode at home. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, things can blow up if right. uh, there's not conversations. And, and my point earlier that that's a typical kind of right. situation that we've all experienced when we had young kids. Right. However, those moments can still arise as we hit midlife. Right. And, uh, you know, the lessons we learned um, sur surviving, <laughs> having young children and new careers, um, you know, are what we're talking about today because right. they're, they're serving as well. Right, right. It's just the same principles. And something that uh, we talked about was the talking together about our goals is a way to organize life that the have to's don't get in the way of the need to's. And it's almost like that tyranny of the urgent and everything coming. And then we forget about what's really necessary. 
So uh, that's what this does a little bit, is it weeds out a little bit of that. Yeah, because if you look back on your 2021 and say, of the need to things that would have made 2021 perfect, which ones got skipped just because life was so hectic? Yeah. And, uh, you know, when we talk about need to's, they're typically um, family times, family vacations, Mm -hmm. could be personal development Mm -hmm. that should have happened that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. Uh, Maybe there was a certificate that you should have earned that would help uh, move you ahead, give you new opportunities. Uh, Perhaps there's new equipment that uh, maybe got bought, but you never took the time to really learn how to use it. Um, Those are need to's and they end up being the, the reason that you needed them is because they would have catapulted you ahead in life. Right. And, um, and often you can go a whole year <laughs> and the have tos right. just eat up all of your need to time. Yeah. Yeah. Emergencies, just emergencies, always emergencies. So, so it, it, scheduling the need tos in, yeah. um, is what moves you ahead. Yes. Yes. That's Exactly right. Who was the guy? There, there's a book out that talks about this, and it's about just stumbling ahead. And I'm trying off the cuff. I think it's entitled How to Fail at Almost Anything. Hmm. And uh, the author is the author of uh, the Dilbert series. Ah. And I can't remember his name right now. It'll but be in, you, it'll you'll be be in able the article. To, you'll be able to look it up. <laughs> Yeah. And what he did was he kept scheduling um, the next learning opportunity. So, um, and, and the greatest example in our life is going to college. You know, basically, if you sign up for college and you put aside four years, in four years, you end up with a college degree. Right. Um, well, the same thing can be applied to um, your career. Maybe... Uh, Maybe learning to be a helicopter pilot this year mm-hmm. would advance your career. Yeah. Uh, is it a have to? No. But it's a need to. Yeah. Um, and like I said, there's there's lots of professional certificates. But if you just sign up for them. Right. And you get through it. Yeah. Um, yeah. You've, you've moved ahead. And exactly. what uh, Deb and I used to plan parties once a month when, <laughs> when our kids were little. Yeah. Because uh, the house would get destroyed. <laughs> But if we had a party on a Sunday, Mm -hmm. then we'd spend all day Saturday cleaning the house. So once a month, the house got cleaned, whether we wanted to do it or not, because uh, it it went from a have to to a need to. And uh, the same thing can happen to your life when you schedule goals. um, Yeah. They become, you know, when your need to's become have to's, right. you end up having a fulfilling year. Right, and right. So, yeah, and working backwards. Yeah, that was funny because I just remember how, you know, it got, I mean, we didn't have anybody to clean our house. We'd have to do that. But yeah, having those, even those little short term goals yep. were really, really helpful. Well, let's hit on a couple of these um, financial mm-hmm. first with the goals. And if you even talk about this, because from what I know, a lot of uh, couples or people that are um, in together, they don't really talk about it too much except for uh, maybe not mm-hmm. disclose. Maybe that, <laughs> you know, my credit card is just, you know, going crazy here. But, um, you know, there are many places that will help you out in this, such as like the Dave Ramsey's and all of these and getting out of debt. And But this is a good time to talk about financial goals. In fact, just as we record this, just yesterday, you came in and you're, you're much better than I am at saying, oh, okay, so this is where I'm at for the year and what I took in and how much we have coming. You know, this has been your area too, is finance, but still going through your personal, not all people that are in finance spend this time on their personal, they're, they're spending time with uh, clients. So, but understanding... How much is coming in every month from different investments we have and from, you know, what I'm doing, what you're doing, and just a a realistic picture of what we have. It really helps me as well because it, you know, I kind of balance my own business, but you do, you have taken over, you know, doing family and uh, investments and other things that we've, we've gone through, especially. um, Yeah. And kind of the way this started is, is, um, 
you know, Deb and I lived paycheck to paycheck when we were younger. And um, unless we had a goal to set aside a certain amount of money, we wouldn't be able to buy the next washer. Right. We wouldn't uh, have the money for the next used car. Right. Um, you know, uh, at, at some point, you, you you realize we need to go from our minivan to a suburban to haul <laughs> all the equipment, yeah. and that's that's going to take extra money. Yeah. And uh, we had a commitment to stay out of debt as much as we we could. So um, you have to set savings goals, yeah. and um, to say set savings goals, you got to make sure you stay on top of your budget. So those goals, th- therefore. We, by talking about it, we knew why we weren't going out to dinner, yeah. for instance. Right. Uh, it wasn't that I was imposing limits on Debbie. It was something we came up with together. Right. Right. And uh, and we knew the reason why, the, the long-term goal. And, uh, you know, we would talk, talk about how we were tracking and how close we were getting and when we were going to be able to get the Suburban. Mm-hmm. You know, or whatever the next item was. Yeah. Um, maybe it was a new piece of music equipment. Yeah. Or, you yeah. Know, yeah. Whatever yeah. it might be. Um, but when you talk about stuff, uh, you, you get to talk about where you're at, mm-hmm. where you want to go, mm-hmm. and most importantly, how are we going to get there? Mm-hmm. And th- that discussion brings you closer together. And it also allows for good ongoing conversations right? because we're talking about how are we doing getting to where we want to go right right yeah i think that's a really great principle and um and as we you know my business has been separate you know i have a separate account of course all of that with with what i do and what you have done because you've uh, started your own business as well so we both we've both been entrepreneurs greg had his own business his own um yeah but that was that was midlife too. yeah it was it so. was midlife that you had made that change but um i think the the principle of saving and i still remember saving up for our suburban which we bought used by the way and our toyota van that we had had love toyotas but this one <laughs> this one was on its very last legs and uh, and you know we had three sons that had huge feet like Greg does, and you know just the fact of transporting them, and oh, then yeah. one of them played the tuba. Okay, so yeah, between transporting the uh, music equipment, the sports equipment, <laughs> yeah, it just it just became where we needed the lot. suburban. Yeah, and I still remember my dad saying, "You mean you paid it off?" I mean, he was so surprised. Well, yeah. I mean, we paid for the. Yeah, I, yeah. we didn't want to have a car payment. And we had had a car payment before, and I think I had in my silicone oh, first, you know, say. way back. But yeah, we've tried to save, and then that's a wonderful Dave Ramsey um, sort of principle too. He always encourages you to do that. So, you know, and some people really need that structure, and so that's why I even bring him up. But but you need that structure of making sure when it is the most wonderful feeling when you're not in debt. And again, we worked paycheck to paycheck. It was and. You know, I never knew how much I was going to bring in a month. Ever. Right. I didn't know what concerts I would have. I kept teaching all the way through privately as well because it helped me be at home. Somebody, it's kind of nice to have somebody around, you know, when those kids, <laughs> the three boys and how close they are. And it's kind of nice, you know. Um, but And it, know. it also helped us uh, know that there was a minimum amount of income that was going to come in. Yes, you know, if yes, you've got, we knew that. If you've got yeah. 10 yeah. students, uh, right. you know that, yeah. That is coming in. Right. Yeah. And, and the teaching always was a pretty stable base for me. Right. And sometimes the club work, too. I was doing club work at that time because I wasn't traveling as much. So, you know, there was, uh, I carried, there was a couple times I carried a lot of students. But, yeah, again, it was very helpful for both of us, so for me to do that. So, well, let's kind of switch there. That was financial because really talking through this and how to get out of debt um, and especially credit cards, man, if I can encourage anybody right now is not to let that, uh, those rack up, I tell you. Um, and if you want to, I'll put some links in some of the, um, financial principles and, and that we've even done together, uh, talking about family, um, because a lot of times with family, it depends on what stage your family is at, but if you're going to decide to do some coaching this year, okay, so that takes away time from something else. If you decide, 
um, to do a special vacation uh, with the family. There's different things that you, you plan on doing, um, church responsibilities, if that's what you're doing, and, um, and with coordinating all of those sort of goals, because every year is just going to be different, too, as your kids are growing, and especially when they get into that, those teen years. I found it was emotionally a little bit harder to, to handle and knowing what they were doing. And, um, you know, we had boys that would respond with one word answers. So it was like, hmm, I, I need to find out. So I would schedule in um, driving before they could drive. And when I had them in the car and their friends in the car, oh, I found out so much stuff that I would never find out. So figuring out a few of those little things together as a team, again, are very, very helpful. So any comments that you would Well, have? Um, so going back to the have to and the need to, yeah. um, you know, getting kids to all their activities is a have to. Yes. Um, but in the midst of all they have to, there's need tos that need to happen for your family and uh, right. your role as parenting. Right. Um, so, you know, one of the uh, the need tos is making sure that your your teenager is developing correctly, yeah. um, and it's best to schedule in the time <laughs> to uh, to make sure that's happening. Right. And instead of uh, what we experienced ourselves and, and we watched in, you know, scores of parents is, is that the have tos, uh, leave them living in a frantic life mm -hmm. and, uh, years go by and, um, nothing really happens other than we get older. And, um, and it's really sad to watch kids just get older and not develop. Yeah, and you know you can say they developed because they their pant size grew, but that's you know that's you know kids need more than that, and they they need us as parents to to be ha having a plan and uh, and we've told you lots of times that raising teenagers and uh, college students is an art form. Yes. Um, so you are constantly adapting to whatever canvas. Um, is before you and um, but that just means more conversation right. between you and your spouse right. and uh, making sure that the, f the feedback's constant yeah. but um, don't let life just happen to your um, growing kids yeah. make sure that the, the have to's are getting taken care yeah. of Fair and enough. if they've got have to's that means you've got to have to right Right. Because you've got to, you have to follow up. You have to monitor. Yeah. Um, you have to evaluate. Is, is the program we're in yes. getting what I want done right. accomplished? Right. And um, that's your job. Uh, just because they're having fun doesn't mean they're developing. And uh, you're the one giving them the responsibility to evaluate and change course right. if that's what needs to happen. Definitely. Definitely. Oh, by the way, uh, so Please. this whole setting goals as a couple started for us when we were much younger and we'd spend at least new year's day and sometimes part of new year's eve day um, going over goals and uh, typically they were the financial right. and personal development right. um, honest evaluations of where, where our kids were at um, um, sometimes we'd spend time talking about our friends and um, what kind of friends we need to develop um, often, uh, it was not all the books we were going to read next year, yeah. but two or three yeah. that, um, we had as goals. Mm -hmm. And, um, so uh, what was good is, is you know, Deb never like held me accountable, you know, and on February 1st asked me, how, how am I doing on that book? <laughs> But there, there is a little silent accountability that yeah. the two of you talked about reading, you know, Pilgrim's Progress, right, um, right. that there's a <laughs> kind of a unstated right. expectation that, that that book's going to get read sometime right. soon. Yeah. And um, so anyway, right. that's how this whole thing got started yeah. is this, we used to do this. And that works along into our personal and our professional development because it's, you know, what we each um, would like to do. And again, um, there's 
there's no checking up, you know, and, unless we just share with each other. I mean, yeah, you and, feel and free what, ha- to do what that. happened Friday is I kind of closed out my 2001 um, investment year, yeah. and so. Uh, you know, we don't wait for New Year's Eve to do yeah. this anymore. Yeah. Uh, so I was just, as part of our natural rhythm of things, yeah. uh, letting Deb know, yeah. know how the year was. Yeah. So uh, it took all of 30 seconds. Right. Well, it, it took didn't... took me, you know, 20 minutes to, <laughs> yeah. to do the calculations yeah. and 30 seconds for her to review. <laughs> yeah. So, boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Yeah, but 20 minutes for him. As, you know. <laughs> But, I mean, as we record this, it is before the start of the year. So this is when, you know, and I really appreciated that because it's like, oh, that's where we are. You know, it's very right. helpful to look at look at that. So, um, yeah, the personal, professional, like what things are going to cost this year, I have decided, and we've talked about this, and I've got a big uh, push, more of a push on marketing this year. I have so much product, I have a lot of product, and especially in music and publishing and of just but I have books as well all of that and um and speaking and so the promotion part for me that's where you know I'm not going to do courses I'm not going to do all of that although I have some flyouts for those and finishing up some things but but otherwise it's scheduling work and promotion yeah and yeah. and so obviously we started uh talking about the marketing budget back right. in November yes um we don't we don't wait Till yeah. New Year's Eve anymore, no. um, because uh, there's a fluidity to you know yeah. business Planning. that that needs to happen. Yeah. So um, uh, what used to be a two day you know kind of event is morphed into more of an ongoing right. you know just something we do right. on a weekly basis. Right, right. And you know some people plan their whole year in advance and you know all of this, but um, things change. <laughs> sure. Right. All the time. So you want to be flexible. Which is that, what we said about the canvas with the kids. Of course. Yeah, I mean the same thing that's true yes. with the kids is true with our businesses. Yes, you know? totally true. Okay, so now I'm gonna to get to I keep feeling like I'm gonna sneeze here. So sorry for those of you listening. Um pet allergy. <laughs> Health and wellness and our fitness. This is especially where um, you know I can hear what your goals are. But I'm not going to say, oh, hey, you know, have you put on a little weight? (laughs) Have you done this? Or have you lost that weight you're wanting? (sighs) You know, I careful, careful. But the good (laughs) thing about talking about uh, fitness goals is it impacts um, your dietary um, restrictions, needs, and it also impacts your scheduling. Right. So if I tell... Yeah, Deb, that I, you know, I get out my protein and I got to cut carbs, especially at night. Yeah. It impacts, you know, where we go to dinner, what kind of things we schedule yeah. to cook for dinner. Right. Um, if I'm going to, you know, d- you know, commit to, you know, more cardio, that impacts my schedule. Right. Um, so, you know, just uh, simple announcements about, uh, yeah. you know, what the doctor said about uh, your blood levels. Yeah. Um, should lead to a constructive conversation where you're together on the same page about where we're going over the next few months. Yeah, and that's very, very helpful. In fact, some of our travel right now, I've wanted it to be active travel. So either with bike riding or hiking, you know. Um, so it, those are nice goals we've talked about together. And we know we are accountable working back from those. Okay. Yeah, if you, if you schedule a... Uh, <laughs> A vacation that requires 15 miles a day of bike riding right. and it's out six months um, yeah. and you don't feel like riding the bike today, you know, you go, hmm, maybe I should jump maybe on I the should. bike. Yeah. Yeah. So again, those are, they're working backwards on those. Let's talk just briefly about location because I think as we record this, I put this in here because of the goals. There's a lot of people now that have started to work remotely and they can work anywhere. So... When you've got a family and you've got, um, there's a lot of moving pieces here about where you want to live. And I know we are in Southern California, but a lot of people have moved. They've gone, I just got another announcement the other day of just, you know, Florida or, you know, Midwest or Texas or um, just different places, Arizona. So they're they're looking to um, 
be able to have a different location. So, and we have a son, two sons right now that are moving. And uh, one's moving from clear back east to Cleveland, which is uh, kind of funny because you played for the Indians. Now, it was the Indians. Okay, so, but, um, you know, and the other is moving into a place where he can have his dog. So th those sort of things. Now, they're kind of, you know, they're not just talking with couples there, but, but, but still, those are changes and planning ahead for that. And sometimes those things come up very quickly. But talking about that, there's many people at mid-career at halftime that want to downsize. That's a big deal too. But talking through that, what is our long-term plan? And we've talked about that because of the place we live as well. It's all on one level. <laughs> it's going to be... <laughs> Those are good things when you start getting a little older. So, um, but anyway, let's, let's talk about that briefly on, on location. Do you have any insights about that? Well, again, you know, where you live should serve uh, all your other goals. Right. So, um, uh, generally speaking, at the beginning of midlife, you've still got kids in the in, nearby and, uh, you know, you've got some responsibility. But as those spread out, um, you two need to figure out um, where would the, the ideal place for the goals for the rest of your life meet. And just because you lived in the same house for 20 years doesn't mean that it's going to serve you the, right. the next 20 years. Right. And um, uh, one of the advantages of uh, remote work is, is that um, you can begin to look at properties as a, uh, a satellite office place. Mm -hmm. And maybe you had a four bedroom place before and now you're going to have a three bedroom and an office for each of you. Yeah. Um, so, and, you know, proximity to an airport, um, yeah. you know, what are the fun activities you're going to enjoy for the rest of your life? Um, you know, keep that in mind. Yeah. Um, cause generally speaking, the home you raised your kids in was, um, something you stumbled into. Um, <laughs> we <did>. and, um, <laughs> you know, years raced by yeah. and it served you well, um, and you've got lots of memories there, but, um, you know, it, it's just, uh, it now is a different opportunity and, uh, with technology that the opportunities have got even bigger than they were uh, 10 years ago. Right. And, uh, there's some podcasts I listen listened to and they're now working from other areas. They were in San Francisco. Now they're in Austin, Texas. And they, you know, it just, it gives, um, a lot of freedom to be able to explore some different places. Yeah, well, one of the things that we've noticed is, is that uh, if you are planning to work remote, you can you can buy more of a trophy property knowing that you can Airbnb it, mm -hmm. and um, and then you can you know spend a month in Costa Rica you know on a beach, right? Um, for less money than it costs to live here, while you got your house rent it out right um and then the next month you can be in nashville um right. so you can continue working but you don't have to be tied down to a location and um the technology of airbnb and venmo uh venmo um yeah, yeah. it really yeah. opens up some interesting op opportunities right. Home away, all and, as, and as long as you're set up with a great laptop and uh, internet, some yeah. sort of internet and <laughs> Zoom communications, um, you know, really, you can work at a lot of places to just make sure your home's one that's uh, desirable to be rented out. Yeah, and we've thought mm -hmm. about that as well. We've got home offices and um, doing a little bit more travel, and I've I've done some webinars on how to work remotely, right. and it's it's really great. I mean, being gone a couple of weeks and being able to have everything scheduled and, you know, be able to do some of the, even the online meetings. Yeah, I mean, and, you did quick updates yeah. from a river cruise. I did, like, on, on the boat. On the boat. On the boat. And, and you took know, her, it works. It took her like 10 minutes yeah. out of our day. It's done. And it's done. Yeah. Um, and we're halfway around the world. Right, right, right. So there's so many things, possibilities there. Mm -hmm. So, well, great. This has been 
really a fun one to do. Good. And I didn't think, you know, a lot of people say, goals as a couple, are you kidding? <laughs> How are we going to talk about that together? I mean, or, or maybe like, oh, we're, oh, we're never together on that. But really, communication and figure out the way to talk about some of this stuff, about especially finances. I think that's one of the biggest areas for people having conflict. So the finances. And yeah. schedules would be a yeah. close second. Actually, mm. it is. Scheduling with the kids and with, yeah. Your well, and your, and your business and those things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of the expectations of every, every, you know, each other going, you know, I thought you were doing that. Why aren't you doing that? <laughs> it's like, why do I have to do everything? Okay, so <laughs> you might think it, just don't say it. That is my word of wisdom. Okay, so... <laughs> But these are great for our financial, our family. I think we hit on all of them. Uh, personal and professional development, health, and location. So again, there's an article with every single um, show that we do. So make sure you click into there. Greg, thanks so much. These are so much fun to do together. They're just really, really fun to do. Good. And hopefully that you all enjoy, enjoy these sessions as well. Next week, um, I'll be talking about when naysayers say, you can't do that. <laughs> and almost as bad as like, I can do that. Okay, so <laughs> that'll be another one. Okay, so how much to say I can do that? Oh boy, you better you better lay off on that. But it's the naysayers that say you can't do that. That gets that kind of gets me riled up. I don't like people to tell me that you can't do that. No, like who are you? Th- you know that sort of thing. And you might feel it. You might it might not be said, but. You might just feel it by some body language and actions and all of that. So I'm going to kind of go through some of those mindsets for you next week. Thank you so much for joining me, Women at Halftime. You can get womenathalftime.com, goalsforyourlife.com, deborahjohnsonspeaker.com. I've got a bunch of websites. You can find them all. And But if you go to womenathalftime.com, you can get all the links there. Of course, djworksmusic.com. People love the music. They go there usually first. So thanks again for joining us. Um, Greg on with me this week, Deborah Johnson. And it's always a pleasure. And I will see you next time. Thank you for joining us. It is because of our wonderful listeners like you that we keep going strong week after week. Share and follow us for new shows to inspire you and encourage you in your life's journey. You can find all of our articles and links at womenathalftime.com.